Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on adding data to an Excel worksheet using text boxes on a user form. So in columns A through D on this Excel worksheet I have, uh, A contains participants and B, C, and D contains variables I want to populate with data, uh, first name, last name, and score. So I created this user form that allows me to quickly add data to this form using text boxes. So in this example you see if I add a first name, I'm just going to type first, and then last, and then a score, let's say a 50, and I click enter or click this command button that uh, has a caption of enter, either way, it's going to populate the data in the correct place. First, last, 50. Notice that the focus is now reset to the a first name text box and it's lining up with the next row so it's ready for the next set of data so let's say this one is uh, John Smith and he has a score of 90 and again it's reset so I'm going to show you how I built that user form so I'm going to start by clearing the data I've, I've populated here and creating a new rectangle for the new user form. And you can use a variety of controls here to uh, allow you to activate the user form. I just, in this case, like to use a rectangle. I'm going to make this one um, orange. And now let's move to the code view, which is Alt F11. And you can see I have the code for the other user form. I'm going to create a new one though here. So it's insert user form. And here's what it looks like by default. I'm going to leave the name as user form one, but I'm going to change the caption to main form two. I'm also going to change the back color from the default gray uh, to a dark blue expand it a little bit. So I know I'm going to need three labels, so I'm going to put those on first. And one additional thing I want to do with the properties here is I want to change the uh, default font from Tahoma to Times New Roman 12. And then I'll delete this label and then add it in again and it'll retain the properties of the user form. So it saves you from having to change the font for each object you put in. So as you can see it's not visible because of the color. I'm going to change the four color to white. Now it's visible. And we know this is going to be uh, first name. So I'm going to leave it, the name is label one, but I'm going to change the caption to first name. So from here, getting the other three labels together is fairly straightforward. Uh, just copy and paste. And then I'll make this one, I'm going to change the caption for this one from first name to last name. And then I'm going to paste again. And this one was our score. So I'll change the caption from first name to score. Now I know I need three text fields. So I'm going to go text box. So text boxes are also referred to as fields. So I'm going to create one here for first name. And then I'm going to copy and paste this one. And of course, you could add them the same way I add the first one. It's a little easier copy and pasting to keep the size consistent. Uh, you can resize them using the properties on uh, the left, or you can drag and drop, or, or drag it like this inside the form uh, to change the size as well. And then we need a command button and we'll put that in. I like to make these relatively large. 
I'm going to change the back color to white. And I'm going to make the font a little bit larger here. Um, let's go with the 20. And the caption, it's going to change to enter. So now I need a way to call this form. So go to Sheet 1 Data, double click that. And you can see the command for the other form is already, it's already up there. This will be a new subroutine. This will be open form 2. And just like the code I have up there, uh, it's this is main form show and setting the focus on the text box. Uh, so this will be user form 1 show and user form 1 text box one set focus. This is important because you want the user to be on the correct text field when the user form opens. So now we want to assign this to that uh, orange box I put in there, the orange rectangle. So just assign macro, select open form 2, click OK. Now when I click this, you can see uh, these text boxes and this button, they don't do anything yet, uh, but the form looks correct. All the objects are in place, and you have the focus set on the first name. So that saves the user another click. They don't have to click into the form. They can just start typing right away. So let's move back to the code view. And now let's start working on the actual user form and putting the code behind it so that it'll work. So I'm going to use two subroutines. And the first one is going to be a command button one click. And I see it starts as empty. And we're going to populate it with the code we need. So what we want to make sure of here uh, to start with is that if the user populates some but not all the fields, we want a warning to come up to let the user know that one or more of the fields is empty and then give the user the option to enter it as such. For example, uh, maybe they only want to use a last name for a particular participant and not a first name or to go back and correct or, or to populate the rest of the uh, fields. So this will be two if-then-else statements. All right, so we'll start with the first one. Be if text box one value is empty, so is equal to two quotation marks or text box two value is empty or text box three. So any of these events will trigger the code I'm going to put in next on the next line. So if the, the value for the first, second, or third field is empty, then execute this code. And this will also be in, uh, it'll start with if, it'll be an if then else. So this will be if message box. And then we'll have a message here for the user. We'll say form is not complete. And then a question, do you want to continue? And then we have a quotation, then a comma. And then VB question. So I'll put the little question symbol on the message box. And then we're just going to use the plus sign to add the VB yes, no. 
because we want them to be able to answer yes or no. Close the parentheses, not equal to VB yes. All right, so if they answer no, then we're going to exit the subroutine, which is just exit sub. Now remember this is a separate if then else statement, even though there isn't an else in here. Uh, we'll put uh, an end if here to end that, and then on the next line we need another end if for the first if statement we started. So just these five lines of code uh, will check out to make sure that the user has uh, done what they intended to do in terms of populating the data. So if they get past this, so if they they click yes and it skips this, it continues on with the subroutine. So now we want the uh, cells on the Excel worksheet to take on the values that are in the text boxes. So it would be the active cell that we'd be most interested in first. It'll equal text box one value, which is of course the first name. So I'm just going to copy this. And then the second uh, would be the last name, but this is going to have to be offset. It's not going to be the active cell, it's going to be the active cell plus one column. So that's active cell dot offset, zero rows, comma, one column. So this will be the last name. They'll come up right next to the first name. Then I'm going to copy and paste this. Again, just a kind of a time-saving technique. And two columns away from the active cell. Well, this actually should be two. Right? Text box two. One of the dangers of copying. Uh, and then this will be text box three. So even though copying is quicker, make sure you do look back and, and make sure that you've set you change everything you want to change. So in this case we want to look here and make sure we have text box one first name, then text box two is last name, and then score is text box three. And then of course we want to advance the uh, row, one row, for the next entry. So it's active cell offset, and instead of zero one, as you saw for text box two, this is going to be one row and zero columns. And the we're going to use the select method there. So this takes care of most everything, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't address resetting the form. So you want to reset the form after they enter all the data in and they click enter. You want the form to be clean for the next entry. Now I could add this to the same uh, subroutine, but in this case I would just like to create a separate subroutine and call it, and we'll call it reset form. If this were a larger project, there may be various reasons, at various times you want to reset the form, so it's nice to have this uh, separated out. This one's fairly straightforward though. Uh, text box one value is now set to nothing. And again, just to save time, I'm going to copy and paste this twice, but I am going to make sure I go back and change this to the last name and the score. And the last thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to set the focus again to the first name, which is text box one. So I'm just going to say user form one text box one, set focus. So you have this reset form, but it's not called yet, and the way you do that is back up in the uh, original subroutine for the command button, just to add call and reset form. Actually, I'd rather this have a capital F here, so reset form. Okay. So now as it uh, advances here, advances one row, then it's going to uh, clean the form. 
and reset the focus as part of that. I'm just going to call this whole subroutine and run it. There's one last thing I do want to change, uh, a feature that, of course, is optional on the user form. You remember I have the command button, and I want the user to be able to click the command button or to use the enter key on the keyboard. So then for the properties of the command button under default, I'm going to change that from false to true. So it's set to true. If the user clicks the enter or return key on the keyboard, it's the same as clicking the command button. It's going to activate the same code. So now moving to the form, we can test out our new form. So if I click the orange button, let's try a few different scenarios. Let's say John Smith, the score of 85. I press enter, you see it goes in. Uh, say that I skip the first name and I just type Smith as the last name. And let's say this uh, participant has a score of 90 and I click enter. You can see it's going to come up with this question. Form is not complete. Do you want to continue? So I'll say yes. So it's going to leave the first name blank but put in the last name. So similarly, uh, if I just put in John and I tab over, I'm just moving very quickly and I forget to type the last name. I put the score in, press enter, and I realize that I do want to add the last name. I can click no, go back, and type in Smith and then hit enter. And you can see it will populate the data correctly. Now you notice that when I click the tab key, it moves through the fields in the correct order. And the way it works is, and go, I'll go back to the code view here. The way it works is based on the tab index property. As you can see, the first text box is set to 3, the second is set to 4, and the third is set to five, so they're going to run in order. And I did place them on the user form in order. But you could also place them out of order and just change the tab index so that you can tab through the fields the way you want. Uh, it's easier if you start at the beginning and just enter them in order and not have to change the tab index. But if you have some changes later on, like you realize you need to add a text box to the middle of this form, uh, you can change the tab index property and that way the user can uh, click tab and it'll move through the fields in the order that you want. I hope you found this video on adding data to an Excel worksheet using text boxes on a user form to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.